Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Dan Howe. In West Virginia, there are 172 public libraries. Out of those, 99 are part of a library system consisting of 25 main libraries and 74 branch libraries. The Kanawha County Library System has the most branches with nine, and Capel County has seven. But for the most part, main libraries in West Virginia generally have two to four branches. One of those is the Hamlin Lincoln County Library System. It's made up of the primary library in Hamlin with branches in Allen Creek and Guyon River. Let's pay a visit to Lincoln County and find out just how the process of integrating library services between the main facility and its branches works. I'm here in Lincoln County at its main library in Hamlin. Originally served only by bookmobiles, the first storefront library didn't open until 1972. An instant carousel structure was built the next year. The library soon outgrew those original buildings, and in 1994, this library building was constructed. Branches were added in Branchland in 1978 and in Alum Creek in 1982. Let's go inside and find out what makes this library tick. With me now is Library Director Margaret Smith. Margaret, thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. So tell me a little bit about your library. We have the main library here at Hamlin. It was built in uh, 1999. We have a branch at Alum Creek and one at um, Pleasant View, which was formerly the Branchland Library. It's Guyon River Public Library. Uh, so what kind of pro programs do you offer uh, here and at, at your uh, branches? We do a lot with children. We have summer reading. We have um, children's story hour. We also have the classes come in to visit from the local schools. So how many employees does it take for you to run your countywide operation? We have um, four full-time employees and a couple of part-time employees. I would think that uh, there's a, a lot of work behind the scenes that your patrons don't see, things like ordering books, handling paperwork, making sure the lights stay on, things like that. Right. Um, I do the ordering for this library, and the branch libraries do their own ordering, and I do all of the accounting and, and make sure all the bills are paid. That's an important part of the whole process. It sure is. <laughs> So let's talk about how you facilitate library services between here and the branches. What all does that entail? We just try to keep the libraries in good shape and, and keep the uh, librarians up to date on things that are, are happening in the library world. We um, try to keep good materials on the shelf and... Um, keep a, a lot of um, community projects going on. We do a lot with literacy. We have a literacy coordinator here, and she goes to each of the branches and has a, a literacy class. She also does work with the um, uh, drug court, and um, we've had a lot of success with that. We're real proud of that. You have, uh, it sounds like it's a shared program among uh, the right. branches. I would think that different communities might have different programs. So do you have some uh, exclusive programs for some of the branches, or do you try to share everything? We try to share most of our, our uh, programming, but Guyan River is close to the river, and, and she does a lot with um, waterways and, and uh, promoting kayaking and that kind of thing. And she works a lot with um, groups over there in that respect. How often do you visit the branches? I visit as often as I can. I've spent a lot of time at Alum Creek just recently doing things, renovations, painting and, and doing tile work and things like that. But I don't get to the branches as often as I'd like because we have such a small staff. Right. What are your thoughts about 
one central library as opposed to a main library with branches? What I know that there some some areas just have the one all libraries standalone libraries rather than have branches. What are your thoughts on how it works and and uh, that sort of thing? I think that branches are very important for this area, especially any rural area. We have a lot of patrons that don't have access to um, any kind of transportation other than the bus service. And so having the branches in different areas of the, the county is really important for us. What do you see as the biggest advantage to the branch library system? Bringing the programming and the materials to the people rather than have them have to come to the main library. So, yeah, I guess in a large, sparsely populated county like Lincoln County, that would probably be more important than in other areas, I would think. I would think so too. Uh, how do uh, the branches in the main library work with the local school system? We have the children bust the school and and the libraries work together and and they arrange a schedule for some of the classes to come to the library on a, a rotating basis like every three or four weeks and when we can we have special programming for the kids we have um, crafts and things like that for them so usually what the kids do is part of them go downstairs in the meeting room and do crafts or activities while the other kids are, are checking out their books, and then we just rotate them. <laughs> yeah, and again with the branches, and it, it makes a lot of sense in a county this big that it wouldn't it wouldn't work very well for I, I would think for some of the schools to come to the main library. The, the branches right. are much more convenient. Exactly, the Allen Creek Library, um, Midway Elementary, is right beside of them, so they use the library a lot over there. And the Guyan Middle School is right beside the Guyan River Public Library, so they use it a lot. But um, West Hamlin and Ranger goes to the Branch Library, and we have um, um, Duval, Griffithsville come in here in Hamlin. Right. Yep. What are the biggest challenges that you face on an everyday basis? Funding is always a big challenge. Um, as it is right now, we don't really have a, enough funding to adequately staff the libraries. We um, have, uh, you know, just limited resources. Plus, there's always a problem with people understanding how much the library has to offer. So um, I don't think people realize just just what all they can um, accomplish by going to the library. If you didn't have to worry about money, mm -hmm. what would be the, the number one item on your wish list? A new branch at Elm Creek. They're in a carousel uh, building, and I would love to put them in a new building. I'd also like to have one at Hearts. Margaret, what I'd like to do now is kind of get a tour of of your facility. Can you show us around? I sure would love to. So Margaret, why don't you show us around? Okay. This is the circulation desk. And you were saying this desk was made specifically for the library when it opened? It was, and they had a dickens of a time getting it in here. <laughs> I can see that. It was handcrafted by C.E. Mundy, who used to be the mayor of Hamlin. Okay. So He also did these. Oh, um, how neat. Mm -hmm. Here's our periodical section. Okay. And what's, uh, what's all this right here? We have a craft class that's attended mostly by elderly women. And mm -hmm. um, one of them made these doll clothes for it. Um, and we displayed them there. And, and here is a tie quilt that one of them made. She made them out of her daddy's ties. <laughs> How neat. Okay. This is the children's area. We have um, easy books over on this wall, and these are nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have tables for our kids when they come in with the classes. With some of the classic books there. Right. <laughs> 
these are um, audio books. Mm -hmm. This is the juvenile nonfiction, mm -hmm. and we have juvenile fiction and young adult fiction here okay. in this area. Adult okay. fiction goes back that way. Okay. This is adult nonfiction here. My favorite section. Uh huh. <laughs> Back in this corner is local history, and we have um, things on the wall from Chuck Yeager, who is is uh, one of our proud sons. This is his hometown. Right. And this outfit here was um, um, used by um, Mr. Vandalin, who was um, a local celebrity. Mm -hmm. I, see a, I see a photo of him marching in a parade with that outfit. Right. So what is this room, Marjorie? This is our original computer room when we first opened the library, but we had to expand out into the uh, main part of the library. How many computers do you have here now? We have eight, I believe, um, that are, are public access, and when, then we have a child's computer <laughs> that's not public access. Okay. So what do we have here? This is a meeting room, and it's used extensively. We have a lot of community meetings and a lot of programming down here. I understand you have an amphitheater as well. We do, and it's not used as much as I wish it was, mm -hmm. but um, we have a lot of outdoor programming. Thanks, Margaret, for the hospitality. When we come back, we're going to pay a visit to one of Lincoln County's branch libraries. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I'm here in front of Lincoln County's newest library building, the Guyon River Public Library. This facility opened in the fall of 2015. Originally named the Branchland Public Library, it moved down the road a bit and got a new name. Let's go inside. I'm here with branch manager Linda Pritchard. Linda, thanks for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Well, so first, tell me a little, about, a little bit about your library. It's practically brand new. Mm -hmm. Well, we opened in December um, a couple of years ago. It was a major community effort to make it happen. And uh, it's a great location right next door to Guyon Valley Middle School. And in between some elementary schools, Ranger Elementary and West Hamlin Elementary, which works out really well. All the schools can conveniently bring their children here. Was it a big transition from the old building to the new building? Yes, tremendously. The location um, was not well. It was beside of an old school that had closed down, and it was hard to get to. <laughs> Um, and this is right on the main highway. What's the reaction uh, of the community been to the new library? Oh, fantastic, fantastic. I have lots of uh, donations, books donations. Um, people every day still stop in for the first time to look. As a branch library, what's your relationship with the main library? How does all that work? Um, well, the main library is who calls the shots, ultimately. But I have a lot of freedom in, I know this community and the needs of this community. So um, they handle all the uh, financial stuff. I don't pay the bills or even see the bills. So, but I do have to keep the bills to down <laughs> to a minimum. But the um, programs, I know you share some programs, but you have some unique programs you do here on your own. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, I partner with organizations in this community. This community's needs may be different. You know, every area has its own unique uh, 
needs for services. Um, you do some things centered on the river, right? Yes, the river, uh, the Guyon River uh, National River Trail, just a couple miles up the road, they have been developing a park and the river trail, Branchland Area River Trail. And we try to partner with them. They've helped us out a lot with uh, getting this library up and running. Um, and we help with advertising for their kayak and fishing tournaments and such on the river. For you, what's the uh, biggest advantage of being a branch library? The freedom that I have, um, I really like that. I did work at the main library before doing this, and I enjoyed that tremendously. And I always had helpers, you know. I wasn't alone, so I didn't have to do everything all the time by myself. But, and that's a challenge here, but the freedom that I have here to be in tune with what people need, you know, I can prioritize my day the way I see fit and um, my uh, the administrator Margaret Smith she is very good about you know leaving me giving me that chance to just do what needs to be done what's the biggest challenge you face every day uh, working by myself um, the phone's ringing people coming in with all sorts of unexpected requests <laughs> I may be typing up resumes for people, uh, wills, uh, and, and it's, I'm not at all um, legal advice, but <laughs> <laughs> some people think that I know more than I do about you know, how to help them. But I can usually refer them where they need to go. Um, but I have so many things happening at the same time, and I have to just pick and choose the most important and hope I can get it all done by 5 o'clock. Linda, what is number one on your wish list? Um, I wish that the library system as a whole had more funding so we could do more programming, um, especially with children. But there's a, a major need. Some of the smaller libraries really need um, even the adult literacy programming in areas like this, it's very important. Um, I wish that we had more money, but everybody wishes that, I guess. <laughs> Linda, thanks for your hospitality today. Oh, you're welcome. We're gonna take a break and we'll be right back after this. watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Library directors in a library system face a number of unique challenges, but all directors, especially those new to the position, have a big job in running a public library. The WVLC provides training to new directors to help them deal with the issues and problems they face every day. This new director's training provides them with an overview of the position, the expectations the WVLC has for each library, and the details needed to make each library a welcoming, educational place for the public. With me now to talk about the challenges of stepping into a library director's position are two of West Virginia's newest public library directors, Doug Davis of the Helvetia Public Library and Stephanie Murphy of the Elkins Randolph Public Library. Guys, thanks for dropping by today. Thanks, well, for, having thanks for having us. Well, first, here's a question for both of you. What were the challenges you had to deal with when you first walked through those library doors? For me, it was just the, the lack of knowledge of the basic operation of what happens in the library. I've never worked in the library setting before coming from the public school setting. So just not really having an idea of which way do I turn. Mm -hmm. So that was very difficult. Stephanie? 
I think for me it was the challenge of um, knowing that the libraries today need to be moving into the 21st century and dealing with a building that hasn't been updated since 1969 and um, wiring and technology that needed uh, to be brought forth so that we could provide the digital services that are required. Right now you're going through some training uh, here in Charleston. Uh, what are your impressions so far? I'm really grateful for it. Um, learning to manage the budget and understand how nonprofits work um, and knowing what regulations that you're under um, is, is information that's invaluable. So that's been the biggest help for me. And the, the staff here at the Library Commission, I've, I've yet to get on the phone with somebody who hasn't said, we can do that or we can find out how, can do, how we can do that. And they've just been the most helpful. So uh, it's, it's been a very rewarding experience and very uh, uh, beneficial to answering some of those questions and relieving a lot of those fears I had initially walking in the door. Of course, the, your libraries are pretty different. Elkins is uh, much larger than Helvetia, mm -hmm. which is a fairly small library. Yeah. Uh, how has the training impacted the two differences in sizes? Well, we have the same, uh, we fall under the same fundamental rules with regards to financing and budget, and, and we actually use the same service center to provide us with the, the support for, for those things. Um, I think the biggest benefit for me I'm looking forward to in this type of training is the networking with fellow directors so that we can take and uh, uh, coordinate programs and share ideas. Yeah, I think the relationships that libraries form with their communities are just key to their success and whether or not... Um, they're providing the right services. So I firmly believe in partnering with the other libraries um, in the area, with your service centers, with the commission, and, and having that family of people to refer to is, is really, mm -hmm. really important for us. Um, establishing those relationships and, and you know getting ideas and understanding that your struggles aren't unique to you is really <laughs> Well, that is interesting because this is probably the first time you guys have had a chance to, in a in a any kind of setting, sit down with other librarians, other directors in the mm -hmm. state. That's got to be a, a real benefit to you. It's very re reassuring. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, and just in a very short period of time, I found out a lot of things that that I never even thought about. You know, and uh, I've been you know, given a lot of ideas that uh, never had occurred to me. So it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't take long to, to realize you know, how big of a value this is and the resources that are available to you, just knowing who your peers are and who you can call. Yeah, I think a lot of people s seem to think that a library, you open the doors, you, you move a few books around, and that's <laughs> all there is to it. But there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. Really, I haven't read a single book all the way through since I took this job, so <laughs> just don't have time. But I think libraries come from a, an artistic and creative point of view, and I think the brainstorming that we're able to do with other librarians and attacking issues that we have and um, figuring out how to solve them. And there's an expert in just about every area at the table today. You know, the, uh, as you go into these new positions, I know it, many times it can be an eye-opening experience for you. Um, but as you, you've both been there now for a little while, what have you found to be the biggest challenges on an everyday basis for you? Well, for me, uh, it has been to try to reintroduce our community to the library. Um, I, I think that's been kind of a falling off of, of the partnership in the, between the library and the community. And so just trying to get out and, and sell the fact that, uh, you know, hey, the library's here. Um, we want to be inviting and, and we want you to come mm -hmm. in and, and uh, be a part of it again. So that's been a quite an experience for me. I think the biggest challenge for us is that our new motto is change is the new norm. And uh, I think the biggest challenge has been to get everybody on board with the new 21st century library, the direction that we're moving in, and that uh, we're not just about books or DVDs. We're about, uh, we're the information station, and we need to be the experts on everything from how to find the information, how to save it, how to print it, how to send it, um, and the different ways that that can be done. So the biggest challenge for me is taking 
staff and infrastructure building technology and moving it forward very quickly. Stephanie, Doug, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Well, thank Thanks you for, for having us. us. Running a public library is a big job and an important one. Good luck to all of the new library directors as they make our libraries a special place to be. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. I'd like to thank my guests for being on today's show. Hamlin Lincoln County Public Library Director Margaret Smith and Guyon Valley Branch Manager Linda Pritchard, as well as Doug Davis of the Helvetia Public Library and Stephanie Murphy of the Elkins Randolph Public Library. I'm Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.